Welcome back to Armitage Candle Company. In part one, we made three palm wax candles using three different wicks. And in this part, I'm gonna show you exactly how they worked and I'm gonna validate all the assumptions I made. Stay tuned. So in part one, I made three candles using three different wicks, an HTP 93, a CD 16, and a CSM 9. And I put them all through the standard test and I ended up doing two wick replacements by the time I got to the end but I did come to some pretty good conclusions. So while there's so many different ways to test candles, I like to use the standard test because it's somewhat of a baseline and it's a common language amongst a lot of my different candles. So with a container candle, all I had to do was burn the candle in four hour increments at a time and check if it fails any of these five criteria. But setting up the standard test is just as important as performing the standard test. Make sure your candles are eight inches apart, your room is 68 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit, and that you have a four hour timer in place and then you just light them up. And then every hour, check on the candle and make sure it hasn't met one of the five failure criteria. And if it hasn't, you have a passing candle. Something I like to do to be a little bit extra on my testing is I check the wall temperatures of the candles every single hour. And I don't want it to exceed 140 to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. And the reason is somewhat simple. I don't like when people pick up a candle and it's so hot that it burns them or not even burns them, but maybe just surprises them and they drop it. Not only is it a mess, it could become a fire hazard. So while it's not technically one of the testing criteria in ASTM 2417, it's one of my personal criteria I use to make sure that what I'm creating for other people to use in their homes is a safe and trustworthy product. And the other metric I'm always curious about is how much wax does the wick consume every four hours? So I always measure the weight of the candle before and after, and the difference is exactly how much wax that candle was burning every single time. I call that the rate of consumption. So back to the candles. A few safety tests in, I wasn't impressed with two of the candles. Now they didn't fail the safety criteria, everything was fine, the temperatures were good, but it was leaving a lot of wax on the sides of the candle. And so I decided to replace the wicks in those two candles. So the first thing I had to do was level off the top of those. So I used a heat gun and I melted all the wax down the sides until I had kind of a normal looking candle. Well, unfortunately it buried the two wicks, which didn't surprise me because there was a lot of wax left up. But then I proceeded with my wick replacement. If you're curious about a more in-depth look at how to do that procedure, you can check out this video. But what it came down to was using an apple coring device and pliers and ripping the old wick out, putting the new wick in, letting it cure for three to five days and then continuing my safety tests. So because those two wicks weren't consuming all the wax that I wanted them to, all I did was size them up one size to an HTP 105 and a CD 18. And then I continued burning them. I got to the end with all three candles and every wick was surprisingly good. I didn't have sooting, I didn't have issues with temperature and all the safety criteria were met. At first it seemed like, okay, we got, we have winners here. All three of these wick types work just fine. But I wanted to take this validation one step further. So I created three more candles with all the wicks. With one exception, I set the CSN up one size. It wasn't particularly bad, but I did have this really goopy wall. So I decided to add a little bit extra on that wick to see what happens. Burning through all three of these validated my assumptions that all three of these wick series work just fine for my fragrance oil and that palm wax in that container. Now, I'm not saying that these wick series will work for every palm wax candle container ever, but I am saying that they work for these specifically. And the reason is that some fragrance oils may misbehave and may not agree with the wick series you use. But in the case of these, the HTP, the CD, and the CSN work fine. They burn relatively clean with no soot or anything going crazy. My first takeaway from this experiment is that all three wick series, HTP, CD, and CSN, they all work fine. I would give the crown to the CSN wick series because it just seemed to work the best. And there wasn't anything particularly bad about the HTP or the CD. I just really liked the way the CSN burns. So if you're looking for somewhere to start, try a CSN wick. My second takeaway is that palm wax validates this idea that you don't need a lot of fragrance oil to have a really well-performing candle. All three of these candles blew my house out. Great smells throughout the entire floor and below pretty far. And if you watch the first video, you know there's only 3% fragrance oil in these things and they're the size of a normal container candle, which is anecdotal proof that fragrance oil is the fuel for fragrance, 
but the candle is the delivery system. And if your delivery system is overwhelmed by the amount of fuel, it's not gonna be very efficient. So the more efficient you are, you don't need as much fragrance oil to deliver that experience that you're looking for. And my final takeaway is this, palm wax is a beautiful wax. I realize that there are some reservations by suppliers in our industry, but I would encourage us to continue to ask for this product. Not only is it a competitor in the marketplace, it also is just a lot of fun to work with. It's a beautiful looking wax and it's a little bit something different. So if you're getting into it, I'd love to hear your experiences with palm wax. It may not be as easy to get into as soy wax and paraffin, but it's a lot of fun once you get a hold of the nuances associated with the wax. So I encourage you to try it if it's something you think about and you're just not sure where you wanna go. And that's all I know. If any of this was entertaining, useful, or insightful, leave me a like. If you have any questions, leave me a comment and I will get to it when I can. Otherwise, I hope you have a great week. I hope you make beautiful candles and I will see you in the next episode.